Hello, kings, queens, and monarchs of every element. I am the one, the only, the RJB0, also known as RJ the Jank Monarch. It has been too long since we played some amazing retro format Yu-Gi-Oh! together, and I cannot go more than a month without introducing you all to an incredible incredible old format and boy oh boy do i have a format for all of you today for the month of april 2022 we are diving back more than a decade to the last format in which synchros and fusions ruled the extra deck together before the dawn of the xyz structure deck brought on the xyz era we are going to be exploring extreme victory format extreme victory format is as i've been describing to many people basically super saiyan edison it's got incredibly powered up versions of old familiar decks with some hot new contenders and i am so excited to play this format with all of you so without further ado, let's delve into the strategies that will make us extremely victorious. Let's start with the basics. Extreme Victory Format operates on Master Rule 1. That means one field spell total, no first turn draw, and no priority. The format was kickstarted by the March 2011 Forbidden and Limited list, which is a familiar style of list to those of you who played in the Abyss Rising format. Many of the old contenders were heavily reined in while letting loose on some cards that were relics of older formats. Most notably, Goyo Guardian, Cold Wave, and Mass Driver being forbidden got rid of some extremely aggressive combo and OTK strategies that had been tearing up the format beforehand. Old Edison staples like Blackwing, Kalut, the Moonshadow, Dandelion, and Honest were all now limited. Gateway of the Six was also limited in order to stop the Six Samurai threat from totally steamrolling the entire format. The format also saw the grip on older cards like Card Trooper, like Chaos Sorcerer, like Snipe Hunter loosen slightly because these cards were all slower than the format really needed to be. I will also be honest with you all, though, some of these semi-limits are just deeply baffling to me. One notable just for the name alone limit is Solemn Warning. The semi-limit of Solemn Warning brought about the phrase, the Solemn Brigade, a famous phrase from back when I first started competitive play uh, that stuck around for a surprisingly long time after this. Extreme Victory format was also defined by a number of card releases and card limits. We'll start with Reborn Tengu and the birth of the Tengu plant era. Reborn Tengu brought with it a lot of really powerful synchro combo decks, most notably the plant synchro deck that became famous in the later eras of 2011. The package of Dandelion, Glow Up Bulb, Lone Fire Blossom, and Spore, which I affectionately referred to at the time as the Fluff Squad, would be the core of a vast number of decks both in this format and in the formats to come. Extreme Victory also saw the release of the Tech Genus Monsters, TG Rush Rhino, TG Striker, and TG Warwolf are all powerful floaters that can also open up synchro options, but the biggest TG monster of them all was TG Hyper Librarian, a card which made synchro summoning effectively free by drawing you a card every time you did it. The release of Star Strike Blast not only gave us Glow Up Bull, but it also gave us Grave Creeper's Recruiter, a card that brought the Grave Keeper's strategy out of the Tier 2 and into the Tier one for the first time in its almost 10 years of tenure. Uh, Recruiter is a powerful, exactly what it says, Recruiter that allows you to add incredible amounts of consistency to a stun deck that had already seen a little bit of success during Edison format. This format was also defined by Pot of Avarice, the card that single-handedly reduced the risk of combo decks to almost nil. As long as you could survive another turn, Pot of Avarice could start you over anew. Pot of Duality... Pot of Duality was another consistency card that made more stun-oriented decks incredibly 
incredibly easy to pilot and really commanded the $300 price point that it was so famous for at the time. In the extra deck, two other newcomers were tearing up the format. Scrap Dragon provided something that was never available before permanent spot removal available to anybody who could access the extra deck and Trishula dragon of the ice barrier was a game endingly strong synchro level nine that had just come out during this format. These three extra deck cards were really what made the synchro era so incredibly explosive toward the end and why Konami had to rein them in so hard at the beginning of the XYZ years. On the reactive rather than proactive side, Thunder King Ryo and Effect Veiler were really prominent cards during this time. Effect Veiler brought about the era of hand traps. This was a relatively new concept. Although DD Crow had existed before, never before was there a card like Effect Veiler that could so reliably stop plays in their tracks. And Thunder King Ryo was incredibly powerful, not only because of its body, not only because of its ability to stop searches, but also because it could take out single at the cost of its own tribute. These two cards are going to come up a lot today as responses to the Synchro meta. These are all cards and many more that enable the vast diversity of decks that you can see in Extreme Victory format. Let's check some of those decks out. As mentioned before, Extreme Victory format was the beginning of the rise of the reborn Tengu era. This is the first version of Tengu plants that you can expect to see, and looks fairly similar to Billy Brake's edition. The only thing that's missing from it is the triple tour guide from the Underworld and the Xyz monsters that followed afterward. Other than that, anybody who's played Plant Synchro before can absolutely recognize this deck. It also birthed some interesting versions of the deck. Chaos Sorcerer returning to prominence allowed for this Chaos Synchro build that is notable because of its inclusion in a newcomer to the block tour guide from the Underworld, a card that didn't give you extra material for Synchro summons, but did give you free access to Sangan, a card that searched literally every card in your deck except Chaos Sorcerer and Gores. If you want to get even weirder with your plant synchros, you can go for Wash. This was a deck that topped that I can only really guess the acronym as being Water Avarice Synchro Hero. Uh, this is a bizarre list, but you can certainly see where it was going. Treeborn Frog is a level one that allows you to go into Formula Synchron, another defining card of this format that allowed you to draw additional cards and get you closer to your synchro plays. Throw in a Gen X Undyne to bin your Treeborn Frogs and the newly powerful Fishborg Blaster to create a powerful recursive synchro strategy that could get you tons of advantage. Fishborg Blaster really only existed in this format because of this format's ability to take advantage of the synchro mechanic and its subsequent ban in order to prevent the oncoming Quasar Storm. This is a great opportunity to use a card that is unbelievably strong in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. One of the prominent new kids on the block was TG. Although TG's were largely an enabler for other strategies, TG Stun was a deck that began to seek prominence during this time. This is a particularly cool build because of its inclusion of Flamvel Fire Dog and Horn of the Phantom Beast, a new card from the Duelist Revolution that would propel Beast and Beast Warrior strategies to the tops of the tables for the next two years. Speaking of the Duelist Revolution, I cannot go through this format without talking about a deck that is near and dear to my heart, Scraps. This is a wild deck that only saw play during this time because it was during this time that it had the unique niche playability that allowed it to be powerful. The ability to turbo out Scrap Dragon in a format where things like Fiendish Chain were still powerful really gave this deck an edge in the format. Throw in Mechlord Emperor Granal as an anti-meta counter to the Synchro era, uh, and you have something really cool and truly special to, to this time. Scraps would later be abused for any number of other combos, but this is really the only time you get to see scraps stand alone and do what they were always meant to do 
just kill each other. The last deck that was just starting to see its place on the stage was Agents. Remember, the Utopia structure deck had not been released yet, and so the infamous strategy of the Agent Venus into Shine Balls into Gachi Gachi Gintetsu were not available yet. However, Master Hyperion was still an incredibly powerful card, and the Agent of Mystery Earth was still an underexplored searcher that also happened to be a tuner. This is an Agent Herald deck that used the Agent of Miracles Jupiter as its primary agent, something that I find incredibly hilarious and also allows you to play the precursor to the modern Drytron strategy, Herald of Perfection. This deck looks absolutely bonkers insane and I look forward to seeing it get thrown around this time around. The rest of this format is largely reimagining of old friends. For example, Formula Monarchs is a great demonstration of what the Extreme Victory format did to old Edison decks. Formula Monarchs used the old Frog Monarch strategy in combination with Fishboard Blaster to provide an incredible cycling, consistency, and advantage engine that the Monarch strategy hadn't really had access to in this way before. Gladiator Beasts had a fun new toy in the form of Forbidden Lance, a card that was not only battle protection, but also spell and trap protection. The combination of both of those in one card was incredibly powerful for the Gladiator Beast strategy. Another deck that had been bubbling just below the surface up until now was Fabled, a set of cards that really seemed to be the logical extension of what Dark Worlds had been trying to do before, but now in combo format. This is probably the most synchro heavy deck I have ever seen before, using the endless extendability of all the Fabled monsters that summon themselves from the graveyard alongside Reborn Tengu to just throw out as many synchro monsters as humanly possible. Thank you very much to Jackie Brunal for resurrecting this deck from the past. This one is a weird and wild list that I expect to see being labbed to even greater extents than it's been explored before. I think there's a lot of potential in this deck that never really got met during its time. Other fan favorites like Synchro Infernity and X Sabers were on their last legs, still incredibly powerful, but would be largely power crept when Xyz came around. And finally, I know what you all come to my channel for. I know you want the jank, and boy does this format have some fun jank for you. Take this banish stuff deck. Uh, a, a kind of new take on the macro monarch formula that used Reborn Tengu and DD Survivor as endless advantage engines in combination with Cyber Valley, which would banish them and subsequently just get you the guy back for free, and Rose Warrior of Revenge, a level 4 tuner that could get you into level 8 synchros for absolutely free with DD Survivor and Reborn Tengu in the mix. This deck is hilarious, and I cannot imagine that it was that good, but I have faith in all of you to break it. And finally, the war crime jank of the format, Malefics. There are some wild Malefic decks to explore, and they're all incredibly hilarious. In fact, this was one of the decks that I piloted at the time. Uh, Malefics are very cool. They're just free, incredibly big dudes, and in combination with the newly refurbished Gravekeeper strategy, have a surprising amount of staying power. I am sure I am going to see this around, and I am sure everybody is going to regret the these cards ever being printed. So there you have it. Extreme Victory format is a new take on some old favorites mixed with some new kids on the block that have a lot of spunk and explosivity to them. If you want an incredibly high powered synchro format, this is going to be the month for you. And I'm going to be bringing you all sorts of extras. I intend to bring you dual videos and deck profiles and demonstrations and labbings on all of these things. And of course, a Time Wizards of of tomorrow tournament to be remembered at the end of the month where you can compete for your own unique piece of RJ merch. I hope you all have every bit as much fun with this format as I expect I will have, and I'll see you out there on the dueling field.
This is normally where I'd have like a cool end card where I'm shuffling through all the important cards of the format with some like lo-fi music going in the background, but all those cards are scattered to the wind. And so instead I'm going to tell you about what is upcoming and how you can get in on the action. All month long, I am going to not only be prepping for the Time Wizards of Tomorrow tournament, but I am also going to be showing off deck profiles and dual videos that you can get involved in over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash the RJB0. Link is in the description below. There's a $1 tier, a $3 tier, and a $5 tier, all of which get various bonus content and all of which get you the opportunity to show off your deck building and dueling in extreme victory format with me in some of these dual videos. You can also join in on the Roger Luigi's Mansion Discord where you can have fun with an entire community of extreme victory format and other alternative format duelists. A great group of people that you can join in with in the link in the description below. I appreciate all y'all being here and I cannot wait to get in on this format.